Hey guys, welcome to Skill Link. Let's start the video with an intro about an American car. The car we'll be talking about is the Ford SVT Mustang Cobra. It's a muscle car with limited numbers built between the years 1993 and 2004. This model was a high performance version of the Ford Mustang and was considered as top of the line. If you're thinking why from nowhere we're talking about the car, I'll tell you why. The rear suspension used in this car is an independent rear suspension, also called as IRS, and which is going to be the topic for today's video. Any suspension that can be used on the front can also be used on the rear, but the difference is that the steering linkage is absent on the independent rear suspension. In one of our previous videos, we've spoken about independent front suspension. The link for that is in the description below. As explained in the previous video, the working and the features of the independent rear suspension will be the same. This image represents a simple diagram of an independent rear suspension. The independent rear suspension is of three major types. The long leaf spring rear end suspension, transverse leaf spring rear end suspension, and coil spring rear end suspension. Of these three, the most commonly used ones are the leaf springs and the coil spring, and the rarely used one is the transverse leaf spring. Other than these types, there are some more on the list too. They are parallel link system, swinging arm type, and swinging half axles. We'll just keep them brief. This image represents the parallel link system. Two wishbones are attached with the backbone type frame, and to these wishbones, the wheels are connected. Next, this image represents the swinging arm type. Here, a spring or a torsion bar is incorporated at the pivot. The third type is the swinging half axles. Here, two axle tubes are joined to the final drive housing. This permits the wheels to rise and fall according to the road conditions. At the center of each axle joint, universal couplings are installed for the change in the drive angle. Now, let's get back to the main three types. First, let's talk about the long leaf spring rear end suspension. In this type, leaf springs are used as suspension members. The longest spring in the setup bends into a circle to form the spring's eye. This spring's eye is bolted to the spring hanger and the other end of the spring's eye is attached to the shackle. This shackle allows a change in length of the leaf spring when it bends. Also, the shackle includes a rubber bushing, which absorbs vibrations and prevents them from reaching the vehicle. The center portion of the leaf spring is attached to the rear end axle housing with the help of U bolts and a rebound clip holds all the springs together. The second and the rarely used type is the transverse leaf spring rear end suspension. Here, only one leaf spring is used. They are mounted inverted and parallel above the rear axle. Here, both the ends are connected to the shackles. The transverse leaf spring is always used with the torque tube drive. So, the transverse leaf spring does not carry the driving thrust and torque. We have a dedicated video on torque tube drives. We'll drop the link in the description. So, if you want to know more about them, do check it out. Coming back, in this type, the rear wheels are driven by the axle shafts connected to two separate universal joints. Now, the last type is the coil spring rear end suspension. Here, the coil springs are seated on pan-shaped brackets which are attached to the rear axle. Top tube drives are also attached in this setup and the coil springs are not subjected to the driving thrust. The shock absorbers present here prevent the vehicle from rolling and the energy stored in the coil springs is greater than the leaf springs. As already mentioned, IRS has almost the same advantages of the independent front suspension, but the most important advantage of IRS is that it reduces the unsprung weight of the vehicle. Apart from the advantages, the IRS has its own set of disadvantages. The initial cost and the maintenance requirements are high, and the components wear out easily, and sometimes misalignment of steering geometry can be seen. So that's it guys, hope this video was informative. See you again in the next one. Until then, bye.